Hello, hello. Welcome to the Three Pairs Chat. The season is finally upon us. County cricket is back. Get your sandwiches wrapped. Get your flask of tea ready. It's going to be another memorable season back in Division 1. Welcome to the second episode of the Three Pairs Chat. My name is Kasa Alarm, journalist, presenter, your host of this podcast, recorded here at the uh, Midland Studios in Worcester, sponsored by Number 15 Recruitment, Worcester's only specialist sales and marketing recruitment agency. Uh, my guests on the pod this week, the ever-present Joe Tromans, Head of Partnerships, the man with a plan. How are you? Good. Good to be back. Seems and you're a while. And you up a seat as well. Soon you're going to be in this one, I reckon. It's always you've got to have something to aim for, haven't you? Absolutely. Also, CEO Ashley Giles back once more. How's things? Great. Thank you. Yeah, good to be here. And we've got a special guest over there, over on the far side, but I'm sure we'll get you in the uh, hosting seat soon as well. Joe Leach, all-rounder extraordinaire in his testimonial year. Great to have you with us, buddy. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So, 442 first-class wickets for Worcestershire, leading wicket-taker for six uh, different seasons. But for all your accolades, there's one thing I found that you haven't done. Do you know what that is? Bowl me out. Really? Probably not going to happen this year as well, because no. I refuse to play it. <laughs> refuse to get your pads in. Refuse to get my pads on. Refuse to be bowled at you. Probably be for a golden duck, but uh, but um, but no. It's really good to have you on the on, on the program and uh, and and looking forward to learning a little bit more about what you're going to do in the testimonial year as well. What's it been like so far for you? Busy, to be honest. Really busy. Probably busier than I thought it would be. Um, obviously, normally just as as humble cricketers, all we have to do is worry about strapping the pads on and winding the ball down, but. A lot more goes into it with the testimonial year. So, yeah, it's been a really nice experience, actually, and so far, so good. And how's pre-season been? Good. I think the guys are ready to go. Um, the winters are always long, aren't they? Yeah. Um, uh, and suddenly, the, the summer is upon us. Division One cricket offers that new challenge for us. Um, but, we, you know, we, we think the team's in a, in a pretty good spot. The, everyone's in good spirits. I think we're as as well prepared as you possibly can be and, and given what weather we've had right around the country everyone's probably in the in the same boat anyway yeah by the time that this goes out we'll have already had a couple of days play but still i mean we're recording this on the eve of the season and there is a lot of enthusiasm you've been working really hard behind the scenes joe yeah it's good we've been busy but it's been kind of a good kind of busy march april the time where everything kind of comes together um everyone's right cricket's ready we've got to be ready for cricket um but yeah it's looking good everyone's really excited and we can't wait to kind of see the guys on the field really and get going mm. so here's the order of play for today most of the pod is actually going to be answering your questions really pleased to have seen all those comments and questions coming in after the first pod so first and foremost thank you very much for getting all of them in for listening to the first pod for all the positive engagement and feedback that we've had get some more questions coming in for the next part as well either on youtube or if you're listening wherever you are also get in touch on social media as well instagram twitter facebook wherever you can even text joe personally his number is don't worry i wouldn't actually do that to you because uh <laughs> probably be getting loads of messages at three in the morning below like, who's this <laughs> no i won't answer that on the pod no in all seriousness the whole point of this pod obviously is about bridging that gap between the club the players and the fans and members and we're trying to do our bit and it's really good that you are doing yours as well so thank you very much so as i said we've got loads of questions coming in and as a result what i've done is just sort of group them into different sort of categories which basically means that we're going to be spending a lot of the time talking about digital media, domestic players, overseas players, the women's game. But also first, because we had a lot of questions about this, by far and away the most popular topic, flooding. So, um, yeah, we were at the uh, media day yesterday and I saw, um, unfortunately, that it was pretty flooded. But you guys, I was really surprised to learn that it was even worse in the days leading up to that. Yeah, so um, we had another flood warning at the end of last week. Um, and over the weekend, over Easter weekend, we had another full flood. So our seventh full flood of the winter, which was pretty devastating for, for everyone involved. Um, now, fortunately, the, the floods came on pretty quickly and they left pretty quickly. So we think at this point, the damage was, was limited. Um, we were already working on a timeline of the 24th of May return to New Road because we are playing our first couple of 
what are supposed to be scheduled home games at, at Kidderminster Cricket Club. Now we were worried that that may be pushed back that timeline and, and uh, if that were the case, um, and, and obviously then took into account our home T20 blast campaign, it could have been devastating for us. So fingers crossed, everything crossed, we don't get another flood. Um, we can stick to that timeline and crack on from the, the 24th of May onwards. So that's the date that we're looking at, the 24th of May. Hopefully that answers uh, your question, Christopher, Christopher Smith, who says, how likely are we to play at New Road this year? Well, we're aiming for the 24th of May. And um, thank you to everyone else who's got in touch with all your questions as well, to Tony, Tony Davis, Sergit Lange, Andy Wilkes, Simon Williams, Dom Fenny, Stephen Mann as well. Loads of insightful questions, so I'm going to name check you all just to appreciate you all getting in touch. Um, uh, Christopher and Tony also asked about the pre-season preparations. How have they gone at Kidminster? Uh, will this prepare the team well for the first two championship games being held at Kidminster, uh, home games I presume? Uh, will there still be that home advantage with the wicket and facilities? Really good questions. So Joe, I'm going to actually ask you as a player, I mean what's it like for you being away from New Road? Do you still feel like there is a home advantage? Just tell us. Yeah, I mean obviously New Road's home, isn't it? Um, there's no getting away from that. And obviously we love playing there and everything that it brings, um, you know, membership, cathedral, you know, the list's endless. But, um, you know, Kidderminster is is a great backup, great alternative. I think um, this pre-season in particular, the wickets that we've been fortunate enough to train on have really prepped us as well as we could have hoped, actually. They've been been first rate and that's obviously a credit to, to Kidderminster and their grounds team and, and our own as well who have to Bob between the two, um, and it is appreciated um, from the players. This time of year to have proper facilities, proper proper wickets to train on it is really important and sets you up, obviously, for tomorrow and beyond. Um, and yeah, I personally think, you know, we can use it to our advantage being at Kitty the first, the first two games. Um, you know, it, it is a different experience um, from playing at a first-class ground. That's not to, to knock it by any stretch, but it is a different experience different wickets, different facilities, um, you know, just a slightly slightly different rhythm to the game. Um, so, you know, it's something that we'll be prepared for and hoping to take advantage of for sure. I mean, I'd like to just add on that, just to give thanks to, to Kid and Mr. Cricket Club. They've been hugely supportive and, and that partnership, as all our partnerships are um, very important to us. But without them, we'd, we'd also be in a very difficult spot right now. Yeah. I think we've got. I think we've, um, we've got a great partnership with those, and we're very lucky to have a really resilient bunch of staff and players as well. Actually, who have been really adaptable over the winter. They were, were really hard, haven't they? I think it's a great short term. We've got a great short term plan in terms of that ground and that recovery and that backup with Kidderminster in place. But longer term, I think it's something which is a challenge, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it almost teaches you a lot about resilience. Well, <laughs> certainly about resilience, but. What I've noticed amongst the players, the coaching staff, and all the, all the staff is that we've just got to get on with it. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever we're faced with, and the amount of times we've come in this year, and the whole ground is underwater, um, people just crack on. Uh, and we all have bad days within that. We have days when we struggle, but generally that that feeling of we'll just group together, we'll work hard, and we'll uh, you know if we have to dust ourselves down and go again, we will. For you, Joe, I mean. There's something, isn't there, about sight and feelings and that peripheral vision and, and knowing exactly the ground that is home for a reason because you know exactly what the wind is doing, how everything is playing, therefore you can sort of use that to your advantage to land it exactly where you want. Does that sort of go when you, even though it's home, you know, Kidminster, a temporary home, does that sort of, you know, that extra sort of 2% of the performance, does that go? Well, luckily enough, I've been around yeah. for so long that I've kind of, experienced having to move to Kidderminster before I think the vast majority of pre-seasons that I've had have been at Kidderminster grown up in the local league so I've played at Kiddy a lot I think honestly we can overstate it um you know I think we're, we're used to we are used to Kiddy with the pre-season prep the different kind of intricacies like you say wind um there's a slight slope I certainly I notice it coming downhill or uphill at my age um so those things they do play into do play into home advantage, but honestly, um, ultimately we're professionals and we have to get on with it, and, and we will do. 
Sergit asks, how can we compete against the test match grounds over the course of the forthcoming, but equally in the long term? Um, I'm going to come to you on that, Joe, because it must be difficult to sort of compete against those, those, those uh, as, as, as Sergit says, those test match grounds when you want to plan and grow the, the business side of things. Uh, yeah, I think we actually spoke about this on the last pod, didn't we? Yeah. I think we've got, I mean, I've, I think I said that we've got a bit of a glass ceiling commercially at, at New Road, um, which is probably an increasingly lower glass ceiling, if we're brutally honest, with um, the increase in floods. I mean, Ash talked about record floods again this winter, uh, and it's a challenge for everyone involved um, to try and sweat that asset. Well, we've got a New Road at the moment. Um, we've made some really good steps forward. I think someone's asked about how much more commercially we benefit from promotion. I think that's probably a little bit of a myth. On the championship side, there isn't much commercial um, advantage to that on that side of things. Um, a lot of the benefits of kind of sponsorship and partnership stuff comes back off the figures of the blast. If we're being totally honest, that's where the real value is to our partners at the moment. Mm. So we've got a huge amount extra to tap into on that side of things with Division One. I think hopefully we'll get some bigger crowds in cricket uh, in to watch the cricket. Um, we'll try and maximise that throughout the season as well, though. Yeah, I mean, I, I again to add, I think. Um, you know, it is a challenge for, for for what we call the Cat Bs and Cat Cs against the Cat A grounds, the test grounds, um, because we only have so much we can sell. And, and where we can make it up, and I think where Joe and his team are doing incredibly well is 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 the collaboration, the partnerships. You've seen with, with the season launch stuff we've done, um, DPRG and with Beard, um, the, the kit launch, we are doing stuff that, even some of these biggest clubs with bigger budgets just aren't doing. And that's not rah, 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 look at us, but it just shows we can, we can throw a few punches as well and we can, we can do things incredibly well. We can deliver great experiences we've talked about before. Um, but yeah, it, it, life is tougher yeah. um, in, uh, in our environment, I think. You have to be a bit innovative. Uh, yeah. we, like you said, both of you said, we've talked a lot about this on the first spot. It doesn't want to be... This whole point isn't just about that, but clearly there are lots of questions about this. So I will rattle through a couple. You know, you can just give yep. us straight answers. Uh, Simon says, will there be any day-night, one-day cup matches in the future? Well, um, without lights would make it very challenging unless yeah. we give everyone a torch. Um, so, no. I, you know, I think, again, when you look at ground and ground redevelopment, um, you know, we, we need to think very clearly and, and, and some time around what our future path is before we, yeah. we would look to do anything like floodlights. Let's walk before we can run. Bit like Something that. like that. Yeah. yeah. Dom asks, could the Worcester Warrior Stadium be a long-term alternative to New Road if the flooding continues? Well, for, I'll, I'll let you come in, but for, for me, unlikely. Um, I think you're almost, if, you know, it's something we'll talk about again, I'm sure, if we were to move probably better off starting again um where where Worcester Warriors is and I, I go there almost every day I use the gym next door but it's pretty closed Hotel. it's yeah. it's pretty closed as a um as a site there's a road running down one side there's a canal so for for a cricket stadium to be in that area you you, you pretty much have to start again and that you think, experience as well. yeah yeah I think Ash is absolutely right on that I, I think it's a well-built stadium for rugby. Um, I'm not sure the public transport links are overly great. I think, and that would be, a, I think, something pretty central to what we try to do should we have to look down that route. Um, because, again, I think it's not, when we talk about supporter experience and things like that, transport in and out of the grounds, one of the bigger things in terms of what makes that day, the day out, a lot better. Mm. Um, yeah, I think Warriors, the owners of Warriors, and the owners of the stadium now are pretty much on their own route as well. Mm. Um, so I just, yeah, for me, I just don't think it's a pretty suitable venue. What are the new stadium? I mean, obviously, I'm not putting words into your mouth. We don't know how long it's going to be for whatever solution is there. But let's say something was about to change tomorrow. How would that be for you as a player, you know, having a, a new stadium where everything can start from bottom up? Yeah, that's a, obviously, it's a tough one to kind of hypothesise. I think... Obviously, for all that New Road has, it misses some things that, you know, for a professional player, you'd probably look for in this day and age. Things like indoor centre, um, obviously just 
the inability to to have one at New Road with the flooding. Um, you know, just something new and and purpose built for performance cricket, I guess. Um, and all that all that that could bring. That's not to detract from what we have by any stretch, but um, yeah, there's there's certain things that unfortunately New Road doesn't have, and I know that when people you know look around the ground and and historically have looked to sign for us things that are lacking have have cost us in that respect so um you know you'd like to think that a purpose built kind of stadia that was designed around performance as well w would help for sure i mean it, it's worth mentioning that this year what don't we have well we don't have two months of the season at new road which is only six months long yeah because of the flooding um i can't see that situation improving we are i think we're literally at times almost pouring money down the drains good money that's difficult to come by in cricket and that you know we we work very hard to to um to get in and there's the other the other thing around development you, you touched on floodlights but other parts of the ground really need developing because we want to give our members the best facilities and our players and you just can't in an environment a that is underwater most of the time but b you just basically unsure about the long-term sustainability of. I think we want, we're really driven by making Worcester County Cricket Club as good as it can be. Yeah. Now that's for all of our community. When we talk about community as the traditional community, but we talk about our players, our sponsors, our supporters, our members being as part of that. And we just have to consider every option on the table to make Worcester County Cricket Club as best it can be in the longer term. Yeah, I, I, think, I think there's a real, without over-egging it, there's a real danger that New Road could just become almost a club ground. Just you know, the way the facilities may deteriorate over time because it's difficult to invest. It's difficult to invest because it's more difficult to bring income in. Mm. So there's a bit of that chicken and egg. Um, as Joe said, you know, far from trying to take Worcestershire cricket the wrong way, we want to see Worcestershire cricket as we say, back at the big table. So how can we best compete both on and off the field with some of these other teams we're talking about? And we, in that, you know, if there were to be a move, you're not talking about building what I'd call a white elephant, you're not, you know, a, a massive concrete stadium, but the best facilities for everyone, a good revenue generating facility so that Worcestershire cricket can be sustainable, not just for the next five years, but for the next 50 and 100 years. I think we got asked a question, I think it was the AGM or something around the AGM when the annual report had come out, because um, in, in the account it, we'd spent £600,000 in the last year on infrastructure at New Road. And people said, well, what on? I haven't seen anything new. Well, no, that's what we're spending to effectively fix it in the coming year. Yeah, maintenance, keep it at that, yeah. Which yeah. Is yeah. A lot. Keep, literally keep our heads above water. Yeah. yeah. Right, I'm going to hold the flooding... <laughs> conversation there because I'm sure it's going to be back in the next pod and the next one I'm going to just do maybe we just need a flooding centre you know flooding sort of part of the pod and then move on but there's so much to talk about so you know thank you for the questions on the flooding um, but there are so many other questions as well and I want to talk a little bit about Jason Holder and the overseas players because we've got a number of those questions I'm going to come to you first on that Joe at the media day, when you first saw Jason and like the whole you know squad was together, and you got all these exciting players coming together, what did you feel? I'd heard actually that you're Jason Holder's hero. You taught him everything you knew by watching on YouTube, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, the way I bat, you mean? And just the all-round package. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, Jason's got pretty much everything I don't. He's tall. He's got hair. Rolls <laughs> quicker than me. Hits it further than me. He can bat. He can bat. Well, come on, Chief. Is he about above you in the? Uh, I would have thought so. I think uh, that test double the lot of questions. Sneaking him up the order a little bit. I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. Yeah. <laughs> you're um, going to be like, sorry, sorry. You've got to pull ranks, senior. Yeah. Already. Right, like, Jace. You know what? You'd be no. I'm going to come in at five. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm I'm happy down the back end. I can no. moan about the others then. The size of the guy, I'm not sure I want to tell him anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. no. He can do what he wants. I did ask him a couple of questions actually. Um, you know, because I had a little bit of time with him and I asked him some serious questions, but also some flippant questions as well. Do you know what his favourite football team is? No. Any guesses? Quite. I judged him a bit for that. Tottenham Hotspur. Oh. Hmm. 
Yeah, as a QPR fan, that's not great. Yeah, I didn't want to... Send him home. Sorry? (laughs) Send him home. We'll let him off that one. Yeah, okay. okay. (laughs) I did also ask him what what he preferred between fish and chips and chicken tikka masala. What do you reckon? Fish and chips. I'm going to chicken tikka masala. Fish and chips. Fish and chips. Yeah, and I was like, okay, I'll take that. Um, But he doesn't look like he's had any fish and chips for like... 10, 15 years, just how built like granite he is. Yeah. And I asked him what was one thing he could bring over from the Caribbean. Do you know what he asked? Uh, what he said? Sunshine. And I was yeah. like, fair enough. We could do with a bit of that. Yeah. We'll yeah. take that. Yeah. But great to have him. Yeah. I mean, he's, um, I think just to have someone like that walking out with you as a team, someone with his experience, his presence, and all around ability. And he's just a really, really nice bloke. You know, one of the best blokes on the international circuit, so um, we're very fortunate to have him. Yeah. Have you had a little chat to him? Yeah, Apart from telling him that you know you're going to yeah. fly above him, just just watch out. No, I have. <laughs> you know, it's it's great. Obviously, we've had the momentum of, of getting promoted and going into division division one. Momentum of all the kind of the new guys coming in, and and that does kind of breed excitement. And then Jace obviously coming in quite quite late notice. That's just a nice little nice little boost for the guys, and you can tell it does just make. When you have overseas players of, of kind of that calibre, it does just make people just stand a little bit taller and um, and just that extra, you know, 1%, 2%, it's amazing what that does. And, you know, been lucky enough to experience it before and it's that kind of similar feeling with someone of his, of his quality. That's really good. Has he been added to the WhatsApp group yet? Yeah, he's in. He's is in. He, is, he, is, he a, is he a chatter or is he just a blue tick guy? Uh, so far, just blue tick, but I think he's got it in him. He, I know he played golf with the, a few of the guys yesterday, so uh, uh, okay, yeah, be interesting to see uh, how he uh, how he fared. And what about all the others as well that have come into the squad? How has everybody sort of been moulding together and um, and sort of building that sort of new sort of morale? I don't. I think um, honestly, and we speak about it a lot, and I know we do, and I know it's something that Richo mentions all the time. We've got. A, an unbelievable spirit in the dressing room. It's kind of, I got asked yesterday actually at media day, what what do you, are you looking forward to the most and what kind of gets you out of bed? And it, and it is that, it's the group. It's such a such a fun group to be around. Um, and all the guys who've come in have, have added, definitely. You know, I think about someone like Rob Jones. Just, <laughs> he's, a, he's a podcast on his own. Yeah. He doesn't need three of us. He could just do it on his own. Well, he'll um, take this seat. Yeah. I guarantee when we get him on, he'll be like, no, let me, let me do it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's brilliant. And um, obviously Tommy Taylor's come in a lot and with a lot of experience. A lot, all these guys we, we know and, yeah, really looking forward to getting out on the pitch with everyone and just that kind of new feel is really exciting. Uh, got a couple of questions as well. Mark says... Are there any plans to recruit another overseas player when Holder goes? That was also asked by Michael. Yeah, so look, we only have so much resource as well. We've talked about what other things are costing us, and and so we have to be very very mindful of that. It was important to us if we could start as well as possible in the championship. That's you know that that gives you a good a good footing. Um, so, hence the reason for, for starting with, with, with two overseas players. Um, we've currently, for the T20, got Simon Mir signed for that, but we all know there's a threat that he will almost certainly will be missing for the T20 World Cup. Yeah, that's another question that's been asked by Mark. Yeah, so we'll have to, we'll have to look at that um, and whether we replace him. But um, look, we, we want, if we had a limitless pot of money, we'd, we'd spend much more on cricket, but we've got to be realistic again. It's boring, but my job is about sustainability on and off the field. Um, so we've got to balance that out. Joe, I bet you're trying to sell as many holder shirts as you can while he's here. Yeah, we're going to certainly try and maximise it. I think um, digitally we've seen some pretty big figures. There's very excited people out there. that we, When we're following on from the back of Jason Holder, we have some good images from him yesterday. He's just trying to maximise mm. the effects of him coming as well on that, that side of things. Buy the shirt, buy a holder shirt, and buy a, buy a Joe Leach one as well, and uh, correct as many as you can. That's what we <laughs> want to hear, right? Um, but no, seriously, I mean, when you were putting the the squad together, and and then and that opportunity to get Jason Holder came up came about, how much of a conversation was there, or was it like let's do it, or was it like a mm, shall we? Yeah, look, it's an easier one. It's always done in collaboration. Um, 
the communication with Alan Richardson, obviously, and, and Brett's captain. Um, but with Jason, you know, you normally go down the list and you, you have to tick certain boxes. So you look at experience, you look at performance, you look at, you know, where they've been here before and how they've got on, but you, you mainly look at the, the type of character you're bringing in. All those other boxes were, were easy as well. But when you when you look at the sort of guy he is, um, it's just, a, it, it's easy to say yes and get it get it signed off. And you know, hopefully it works for, for both parties. Um, I know some would say, well, you know, giving Jason time here before West Indies are over later in the year is not great for anyone. But look, for us right now, it's exactly what we need. Absolutely. Um, Joe, I was talking a little bit to Alan yesterday about the brand of cricket. And he was quite keen to say that he and Brett had chatted a little bit about being attacking, being bold and trying to, to go for the win if there is an opportunity. Um, is that something that's been discussed? What are your thoughts? Yeah, it's certainly, I mean, it's certainly something that we spoke about a lot last year. I think um, two games spring to mind that unfortunately we came up the wrong side of, which were uh, Durham and Yorkshire are the, are the obvious ones where we declared to, to set up a chase for them and for ourselves, actually. But just generally speaking, I think we've, we've looked to be a bit more positive the past kind of 12 months. And, I, you know, knowing Brett and Alan, the way that they want us to play and the way that all of us want to play, you know, it's much more enjoyable to to go out there trying to you know play to win and and try and be on the front foot um that's something that i've got no doubt will will carry on this year and um you know we had success with that last year so no reason why we shouldn't try and take that into division one have you seen that as something that's become more of a default over your career i think i mean red ball cricket i think i think you know it's all about momentum and momentum swings and i think it's probably just a different way of of talking about that, um, how you can take momentum from the opposition, put it in your camp and run with it. I think um, that's certainly something, you know, over the course of, of my career, obviously the introduction of, of basball, for want of a better phrase, and it's certainly something that teams are looking at and it's not so much trying to mimic what, what they're doing, but it's more that appreciate that actually if you can take momentum off teams by being positive and attacking, then it does put you in the best possible position to win games. I think um, if you constantly look to be in an arm wrestle and just and just wait for things to happen, invariably you kind of you cop it. So I think that's that's the biggest thing, as much as anything I've noticed. The the, the balance has probably shifted from uh, traditional red ball players um, developing with that mindset of play the long game, but as you, said, you know with the, with the amount of short form cricket around nowadays and on the telly uh, and the lights and everything that goes with it, young players are coming through with, starting with that in mind, is playing positively, playing aggressive cricket. So you're almost shaping those cricketers to how you play play the game. Um, and so, you know, it's a, that, that's a better start point, I think. But I think there's still a place for, then you've got to step back at times, almost zoom out and go, right, when when do we have to almost to use football parlance, get men behind the ball and play the long game and just last out. Because I, I firmly believe, maybe I'm, a, I'm just getting old, but there is something still in getting a draw sometimes. You learn a lot from sometimes just playing tough and being difficult to beat. But certainly, you know, we all want our players to play with positivity and play aggressively. I mean, some of the, the brilliant, in particular, test teams that you were part of did play positively and did sort of go for it as well. I mean, it's not exactly like it's reinventing the wheel, is it? Or is it? No, I don't think it is. I think I think some of these things are cyclical. They mm. they, they come round again, but um, ultimately, I think it does depend on your personnel, how you play. Um, and we saw that even in the white ball game with with the England team that from 2015 onwards, and then went on and won the World Cup. The personnel changed from your traditional sort of Alistair Cook and Ian Bell to Jason Roy and Bairstow at the top of the order. So. To play a certain way, you need a certain player. Um, and if the two things come together, then that's when you, you get that perfect storm. You've got the likes of Harry, Henry coming through now. And as Ashley was saying, those younger players, they come in, they, they've they just sort of grown up on, on you know, IPL, the 100, whatever, whatever you want to say. Basically exciting, you know, sixes and commonplace rather than dot balls. How... 
when you see them, is there a bit of a culture shift or is there a bit of a clash perhaps in terms of philosophy? Not necessarily clashes in like tension, but just like uh, where their base is. I don't think so. I think we're probably just the other side of that. I think mm -hmm. over the course of kind of my career, it's probably been, you know, the introduction of 2020 was kind of turn of the century, wasn't it? And I think since kind of 2014, 15 onwards to now, I think the game changes, ha has changed and changes almost annually, the way it's been moved on. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I think back to kind of 2018, where I had a, a season out with an injury, came back in 2019 in 2020 cricket. And to have missed that block as a bowler was a nightmare because all the plans that were working previously, they just disappeared. Batsmen had, had figured them out. And, and I think that's, you, you're seeing that batters are, are constantly kind of nudging the game on. Um, certainly in the shortest form and it's up to bowlers to kind of keep up with it. So I don't think there's a, there's a clash of philosophies. I think anyone who's played for any length of time now has had to embrace that change over the past kind of 10 years. Um, it is, it's a wholly different game now to what it was 10 years ago, for sure. What have you been working on yourself? Obviously, you're not going to give too much away in case anyone <laughs> who you're going to be facing across the seasons watching, but... Has there been anything that you've looked at yourself? Because, you know, you're someone who's always been looking at how you can get the most out of your game as well. What are you looking at right now? I think, honestly, in Red Bull cricket, I think th there is something to, said, something to be said for just consistency and, ju and just being there. Um, and I think, you know, have I, I don't believe I have an exceptional skill set. It's just that I can do it for a long period of time. So that's, that's all I, I'm going to try and do. You know, I'm not, that's certainly not me saying... You know, I can't get better and improve, but I think, you know, why try and change something that's given me success for such a long period of time? Um, it's just about doing it for as long as I can, certainly with the ball. Just, I'm not blessed with, you know, loads of pace um, or height like I'll make Jason. You talk a lot about your height, but your ES, your Crick Info profile has you down at six foot, so that's still pretty Yeah, well, pretty decent. yeah. My Crick Info profile says a lot. Of <laughs> <laughs> I was looking yeah. at six foot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> it's close enough, isn't close it? Close enough. But... Um, so, yeah, you know, you have a skill set that you're given. Um, obviously, just try to make it as, as good as I can. That's all I've been trying to do, to be honest. Yeah. Well, did your Crick Info profile have viewers down as for height? Uh, probably about what I was. I, th I feel like I'm getting shorter now <laughs> as I get older. But, um, yeah, there's, uh, I think there's been a few fibs told on that. Yeah, there's was, was a really funny tweet. Also, obviously, I do a lot of tennis stuff as well. There's two tennis players who are playing, um, Sinner and, and, and Dimitrov, and their sort of ATP profiles had Sinner at like 6'3", and Dimitrov at 6'4". And then when you saw them next to each other, because it was the final, like, Dimitrov was like that much shorter <laughs> than the other guy. You're thinking, yeah. hmm, I wonder who's telling the porkies <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah. But, yeah. That sort of stuff is always kind of funny. Um, we're massively over time already because we've got so much to come. We're going to talk about women's cricket. We're going to have a little bit of a player profile as well with, your, with yourself, um, as well as um, talking a little bit about the kit launch. So let's get through some of these questions that have been coming through. Um, Mark asks, can Josh Cobb play red ball cricket if needed? Uh, that's not the plan currently. The plan is for, for Josh to, to play T20 with us. Um, and again, we're you know, really pleased that we've got him for that, for that tournament, really versatile cricketer and experienced cricketer had success. So, yeah, really pleases with us. Um, Mark also asks, is it expecting a lot for Roderick to keep wicket and open the batting? Is there an alternative if Ed Pollock continues to struggle? Um, yeah, I mean, there, there are alternatives, but uh, it, yeah, it's often you want to go in with your best possible balance. Um, I know Richard likes to go in with a lot of all-rounders and particularly in that you know what we call the engine room that middle bit which this this first game we're likely to go in with a really strong yeah. engine room with perhaps someone like Nathan Smith batting as low as nine um, Joe Leach batting as low as ten <laughs> what ten or eleven so um, yeah it's just about getting your balance right and having having a keeper who who can bat as well as Rodders is um, is always a bonus do you have a good con uh, conversation there about it all or is there any preference for yourself, Joe, when it comes to having someone who, not in this situation, but someone who just solely focuses on keeping or is also, you know, 
perhaps got their minds on, on how they're going to bat. Well. I think it depends on the individual, doesn't it? And I think we saw last year that Gareth's perfectly capable of doing both. Um, so, yeah, I, I have no concerns, for sure. Uh, Liam has also asked, there's been a lack of investment in the playing squad. Trying to survive in Division 1 on the cheap is what Liam says. What are the priorities this season? It's not clear to me. Thanks for your question, Liam. Always up for questions that aren't just, you know, well done. Yeah, but that's what this is about. You know, if, if you have these gripes, it's good to get them in. I'm just relaying what Liam has said. Yeah, what absolutely. I'll, I'll tackle it, start off with. I mean, we've, we've got, we have limited resource. Um, we've talked about, um, you know, our ability to generate revenues and we're doing incredibly well across those areas. But there is a ceiling there. We're overperforming in a lot of areas. But um, when you make a comparison to the likes of Surrey or Warwickshire or Lancashire, and their turnover as a business compared to ours, um, quite frankly, you just can't compete on playing budget. It, it, it is not possible. And if you do, there is a danger of putting the whole business at threat. So that, that would be very poor practice from a chief executive. Jeremy, is there anything you want to add? I mean, no, going I think... into your ball field, of how difficult is it to sort of compete in that sense with those, uh, you know, as... As Ashley was saying there, you know, the Surrey's of this world. I think it's, I think Ashbury at the nail on the head. I mean, I think it's obviously for me, I'm a supporter as well as in charge of generating income here. And it's, for me, it's, we want to generate as much income as possible mm -hmm. so we can reinvest that back into the facilities and the playing side. Um, but we're pushing it. We talked about that kind of glass ceiling before and that's kind of realistically where we're at. Um, also, a couple of questions have come in about women's cricket. Stephen and Vicky uh, are saying, are there any further plans to develop women's cricket in the county? Uh, Stephen adds, um, he's disappointed that Worcestershire are, only, are one of only two first-class counties that won't be submitting a bid to run a women's team. Um, what's the pathway going to be for talented girls in the county to have a pro career? Well, look, we've, we've, we've still... Um Women's cricket is absolutely important to us. What we've done is not bid for a tier one team um, in the women's game. I'm quite surprised 16 have. Uh, look, it's ambitious, I get it. We simply do not have the resource, the space, the facilities um, at New Road to compete at tier one or the money. Um, what do we want to do? We want to com compete at the tier two level to start. Um, we want to invest further in our women's rapids team and really build that up. We've shown in the past one thing Worcestershire cricket does incredibly well is develop players. And we want to do that across men and women, boys and girls. Um, but we think tier two is a good start point for us. Uh, as we say, then we can we could develop and add more investment as we go. But um, yeah, tier one uh, is just not realistic for us to invest in. Thank you very much. Um, Lastly, uh, your questions on digital media. Um, I do appreciate, actually, the amount of questions that have been coming in and obviously get them in for the next pod as well. Graham asks, where is the webcam in matches? I miss the webcam. Um, I think that's around pitch view. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's one of the most viewed pages on the website. Actually, people like just to be able to tune in wherever they are in the world and just see what the grounds are. Unfortunately, again, to mention the F word, um, flooding, we've got some issues with the cabling and things like that, which when the water's receded for long enough, when it gets clean, it's a priority to get fixed. And Mark asks, can future AGMs be streamed or more notice given so members can attend? Um, in terms of notice, I think we've given what we've always pre previously given, which is I think 21 working days. Um, in terms of streaming, um, what I would say it's quite expensive to do. Yeah. Um, and when we talk about where decisions and wanting actually people to come to New Road and things like that, um, it is expensive, but we're always looking to innovate and do different things in the future. So we'll leave that on as a maybe, I reckon. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, like I said, thanks for all your questions. That's all the uh, listener questions that we've had in. But as I mentioned, do get them in for the next uh, episode of The Three Pairs as well. Um, and as you're talking a little bit there about innovating and, and using uh, the digital resources that we have available, I know that there was a, a huge amount 
uh, that has been done for the media kit launch as well. That's been incredibly successful. So I want to talk a little bit about that right now. Um, and uh, we're going to do that with a couple of new guests as well. Dave Webb from Beard and also Neil from DRPG. Let's welcome uh, Neil and Dave right now. So Dave, Neil, welcome. Really good to have you both here. Um, a huge success with the with the kit launch. Um, yeah, how are you guys? How was it all for you? It was an experience, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it was um, thrilled to do and really pleased with the with the outcome. Yeah, no, it's been brilliant and and sort of as a creative um, process, it's been really interesting to work with people like Joe, who's sort of let us have creative freedom to do something, but then to work with the RPG and be able to say, these are the things we want to do together. Um, sometimes it can be too many chefs. In this case, it was definitely that everyone added something to the, to the pot, which just made it a really great project to work on. So yeah, it's been great. What was it like for you, Joe? And run us through some of the numbers of the success of this uh, kit launch. Um, it, you know, it, it's been absolutely incredible. I think probably, I mean, I've been at the club now it's over five years I think probably when I look back at it in a few years this will be the bringing all of this together bringing Beard bringing DRPG together and deliver this as a partnership probably going to be up there with some, something I'm most proud of um, we wanted to do something different something innovative which set us apart from what not just other cricket clubs elite professional cricket clubs are doing but actually sports clubs as well so again also we can cut through that kind of very busy social media timelines and things um, what the original kind of idea was snowballed very quickly due to what has just been absolutely incredible creative input from Dave and, DL and Neil and the guys at DRPG and it's just the product delivery has just been absolutely <laughs> insane um, and I, I can't thank them enough um, so we just have about 10 days in uh, the content when we split it out across everything across all channels um, has been seen by over a million people which is just great for the club to elevate that um, elevate that and get our club in front of over a million people is just absolutely unbelievable piece of work they've done. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was shocked when I opened both pieces, actually. First, the animation that, that Dave drew, um, and then the show that, that DRPG and, and all of that coming together. Just an incredible piece of work. I mean, as good as anything you'll see on mainstream. I know yeah. they're a brilliant company, or they both are, but... Um, just shocked with how well it came out. It was a brilliant piece of work. Tell us a little bit about your role in it, first of all. Like, what did you want to bring to it? Um, I suppose as, as the sort of creative lead, if you want to call it that, um, it was just throwing around ideas to start with that were, as Joe said, just kind of elevating things and saying, well, cricket doesn't have to be this or, or sports launches don't have to just be this. Um, and it was just trying to bring it from a creative angle that, that would bring that to life. But then this idea of what is Worcestershire and how do we show what Worcestershire is as a whole. Um, it's quite easy to just pick out one or two things, the cathedral, Algar, but then once we really started to delve into it, we've got this long list of things and it just made it more exciting that bringing them to life and making them part of this sort of illustration that was part of this creative process. So um, yeah, it, I guess my role was just to put that down on paper, so to speak, and that was, that was I think fun. The, uh, the original concept came from when you guys came in for a visit mm. uh, with you guys from Beard as well, and we yeah. sort of, we all had a chat in terms of like, what's our point of difference? What does Worcestershire Cricket Club mean? And apart from all the, the great stuff around the sport itself, it's the, the message around community that was so powerful and so impressive in terms of what you guys actually do, and not just some, something you say, um, so that's why if you look at the designs when we had a chat, it, you, you see the ground at the centre of the community and we built the, the artwork around that. Um, and I think that's what I'm most proud of looking at some of the comments on socials. If I think somebody said on the live broadcast, um, what, you know, it's a great that we've got this amazing narrative around community and around our members and supporters. And, uh, you know, it's been a great collaborative piece of work, but the fact it's been received so well and it's been seen by so many is a uh, testament to all the great work that, w that we've all been working on together. So it's been a great one to work on. Mm. Yeah, from my perspective, I mean, we talk a lot and I've heard a lot about how do we sort of 
open up cricket, obviously make it more inclusive, but also something that it's not just for people of a certain generation or interest in cricket. And uh, you know, when you when you look at the the kit launch, when you look at the 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 collaboration here, I mean, it just it, it is everything that people want cricket to be. So, well done. Thanks very much. Thanks. Well, Dave, Neil, thank you so much. Again, brilliant work that you two have done and I really appreciate everything uh, with the media kit launch as well. It's time now for the Green King player profile and we've got loads of questions for Joe Leach. So Joe, how are you feeling? This is the player spotlight, the Green King player spotlight, all about you. Yeah. you like it, isn't it? Yeah, love it. All about me. Not a problem. Bring it on. <laughs> God, this guy. Egotistic. Absolutely, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> now, all right, on. so I've got a few questions for you, obviously. We want people yeah. to know you a little bit more if they don't already. But, um, yeah, can you give us, first of all, a quick introduction, but in ten words or less? That is challenging, if anyone who knows me. No, you're not kind of, no, surely. That's, That's it. Come <laughs> on. Uh, I'm Joe. You'll usually find me sweating. Cool. Wow. Wow. That is. Wow. Yeah, okay. That's a, that's a low bar for the next person. Yeah. So yeah. At least, at least <laughs> not, you know. Well, you know, good team, man, trying to make it easy for the rest of them. <laughs> now, uh, tell us a little bit about your career, then. What has been your most memorable cricketing? Oh. Um, oh, so many. Uh, probably most memorable would be hat trick with the first three balls of the game against Northampton. Um, just drop that in there. That's a quite a high bar. So yeah, fair enough, but yeah. we we did lose. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's probably the most memorable memorable moment like for me personally, I guess. You know when teams lose, but someone's had a really good performance. Yeah, and then like players. I mean, I'm often the one asking that question, and they're like, "Oh, you know, you played well, or congratulations on that five or whatever." And be like, "Yeah," but the team lost. Do you actually mean that? Yeah. I mean, there must be a bit of you inside that's like, yeah, I know, it's great, wasn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, that, you know, cricket is the worst sport for that because, yeah. you know, everyone says it's an individual sport wrapped up in a team, but it does definitely knock the stuffing out of you. It doesn't matter how well you've done. If you lose, it does have a massive impact on how you feel. And, and likewise, you know, if you, if you do um, if you get, an, if you get an or you get an on for and you win, yeah. all of a sudden all your troubles seem to disappear. Yeah. yeah. Good way of looking at it. Who was your cricketing idol then growing up? Well, obviously Ashley Jarrett, <laughs> which is why I brought um, um, <clears throat> right on military medium. Um, oh, shocking. See, he's moved out of you. Oh. Didn't say Joe. I've seen you, Ricky King. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I bend over like you, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I, honestly, I, I don't think one in particular. I think I just, I loved all cricket growing up, so I watched and watched everything. Uh, you know, if you were to pin me down to one, it'd probably be Jack Callis, but um, no no real one in particular. I mean, pretty decent idol yeah. to have. Yeah. Fair enough. But, um, so I'll take you into your swing bowling then, or do you prefer fast bowling? Um, well, I have to be into swing bowling because I can't bowl fast <laughs> and I don't like facing fast bowling. <laughs> so I think, um, yeah, I, I like the skill set of swing bowling, but I think if you were to say what I prefer to watch, not partaking in it, it would be fast bowling. It just kind of, it elevates the game to another level when you've got someone bowling properly fast. Mm. And for any of those youngsters listening out there, what's been the best piece of advice that you picked up in your career that's helped you along the way? Uh, I think just try to be as consistent as you can off the pitch. I think, you know, if you get wrapped up too much in your results, the game of cricket, you know, it, um, it kicks you a lot. So. Yeah, just try and be consistent as you can. Take the take the rough with the smooth, and more often than not, it'll work out for the best. Is he fibbing, or is this what is he always this level headed? Uh, Joe probably knows him better than I. But yeah. but my experience from afar is that he would be one of the Mister Consistencies on the circuit. Yeah. I, I think consistent character is a good description. Well, is that fair? Happy with that? Yeah, I think Richo would say I'm a consistent nuisance. But, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, try to be at least. Yeah, no, that's cool. So before a match, do you have any like weird superstitions or rituals? What's your go-to meal, or is it literally whatever? Whatever. Yeah, I'm not really one of one. So Mr. Kind of... Consistent, but no consistency before the match. Oh, interesting. You consistently inconsistent, maybe. Yeah. I I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of people who left pad on and you yeah. know. 
bat off the ceiling and all that kind of stuff and it's just not for me i don't don't believe in it who's been the worst that you've seen oh. in the changing room here at Worcestershire? um i can't think of any overly weird superstitions at Worcester, I've seen some weird ones in kind of club cricket, yeah. you know, like people taping their bat to the ceiling and then have to rip it off before they go and bat because someone did it to them once wow. as a prank. But nothing too bad, just kind of left pad on first, then right pad. Yeah. Jake Libby has to walk out of the changing room second to his opening partner, which is always fun and games. When Darren Mitchell was opening with him, he used to see how long he could, how long he could, because um, Jake's anxious to get out the door and Mitch was like, well, you know, off you go after you. <laughs> nothing, nothing too, nothing too bad really at the Pers. Where would you like to play cricket if you could play anywhere in the world that I could teleport you to right now? Um, well, obviously, given current weather conditions, uh, Newlands. Yeah. Mm. Pretty special place. All right, you? Oh, that's a good spot. I played one day and, and test cricket there. Beautiful ground. And I, I spent a bit of time in Cape Town as a young cricketer, so... That's good. Barbados is a nice place to oh, yeah. to play test cricket. Not a bit hot. I think you get over it. You're near the sea, aren't you? Yeah. Fair enough. Sea breeze. Mm. <laughs> so who's in charge of the music before a match? Oh. And what do they go with? Do you, think that's you know what? Adam Hose yeah. absolutely loves his soundtrack. And generally it's rubbish. Um, He'll come on now and slag your music off one day. Well, good luck getting me to play any music. I'm not putting myself <laughs> out there. There's only so much ABBA a team can listen to. You know? <laughs> No, I, you know, there's a mix. I think Hosey tries to commandeer the speaker as much as he can, and generally it's it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. What does he play then? Are you going to tell uh, us? Just whatever's in the charts. Pretty can, yeah, nothing. Big Swifty. He's a big Swifty, yeah. So you, you know, you can look at him and see yeah. Swifty. Yeah, yeah, totally. Probably yeah. early era as well. Not even Taylor's version no. albums. Totally. Do bit of Swift, but high school musical for Hosey. Oh, definitely. I can see that. Um, so off the away from cricket, or are you always are you just Mister Cricket, or do you have time and try to switch off and and do other things off the field? Have any hobbies? Oh uh, well, I've got two kids at home, yeah. so there's no such thing as a hobby um, apart from kind of looking after them. But that's that is kind of life away from cricket, and has given a great perspective to to kind of having to come in every day and bowl for a living. You know, having kids at home and they don't care whether we win or lose. To be honest, so. No, kind of, you know, I, I think everyone by now knows I'm a big Wolves fan, um, but not as much time for them as, as they used to be. So, yeah, kids at home, family as much as you can and, and try and, you know, use that perspective, I guess, to help to help the cricket career as well. Yeah, I totally empathise with that because I'm like, yeah, I'm bouncing off the walls, you know, just, just finish Wimbledon or whatever. I've literally not been at home for two weeks to come in. And they're like, right, change your dappy. And I'm like... <laughs> That's the one way to bring your right back down to yeah. earth, isn't it, in yeah. that sense? Um, if you weren't a cricketer, what would you be? And do you still speak languages? Because I know you studied languages, didn't you? I, I studied languages, but no, no. I don't. I'm, English is enough of a struggle for me still. <laughs> um, ten years in a professional sports dressing room can do that to you. So, no, I, I, I honestly, I don't know. Very, I probably would have ended up in the city, I would have thought, doing something like that. And the usual kind of university to city treadmill I would have imagined something like that what do you two think you would have been I've got no idea I always I always wanted to be a pilot yeah if anything else yeah I've always had a love Captain of planes Giles. yeah <laughs> not sure whether easy life of being you know airline pilot or or um, RAF but yeah. uh, love planes oh. you just well I, yeah kind of aim for sports marketing yeah. yeah do the right so far yeah you've done pretty but well yeah we'll see where it goes <laughs> Um, yeah, so are you more into films? Are you more into books? What would be one thing that you'd recommend? Obviously, with kids, you probably don't have time to watch. Either. No, and no. If you do, you just want to sleep. No thing. No, I probably more more books. Yeah. Just, um, but you know, I, I'm not a big film watcher. Really, I'm kind of I read a bit, but uh, as you say, times disappear for that. When the kids go to sleep, it's time to sleep now. <laughs> totally, totally get that as well. Um, right, let's talk a little bit about the future then, in that sense. Uh, any young players in the team that we should be keeping an eye on, or we should be jotting down that you've seen? Before? Several. They've got it. Several. There's some really exciting ones. If I had to name one, which is difficult because I've got to go back into that dressing room. Um, <laughs> one. I'm only giving one. I think Rehan. 
Yeah. You know, partly because every time I bowl it in, I bowl it into the middle of his bat. So I don't know if that's me being accurate or yeah. or him being, um, he's a great talent. I know he's got some runs this week against Kent. Um, looks like he's got a lot of time. He's got a really good temperament. So I, I think if I if you had to pin me down to one, yeah. and that's unfair on some of the others, I think he he would be my one. Can he clear the ropes? Or is that something you think he's going to... No, he needs to get in the gym. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was thinking of that. <laughs> yeah, he, needs <laughs> he needs to go with you to the most glorious one. And he also needs to work on his fantasy team. Yeah, football. yeah, he's, he's used to that. Oh, he fair. prides himself on it, and he's, he's used to it. Too busy just, just yeah, doing doing drama. Loves for defence. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. rather than uh, getting into the gym. Um, so, what are you sort of working on going forward? I mean, obviously, it's your testimonial year. Are you looking at anything beyond this? Oh uh, well, to be honest, I've been look- I've been doing that my whole career. <laughs> Um, you know, thinking about what's next. Uh, I've been doing my level three coaching this winter, so that's ongoing uh, in the background. Testimonials taking up a lot of time as well. So just trying to throw myself into that, enjoy it, you know, first and foremost. I think um, just enjoy the experience of having it and doing, you know, different events, things that are probably out of my comfort zone a little bit as well. Um, so that is is a lot of my time at the moment, uh, away from cricket and family yeah yeah it's quite tough isn't it in that sense i i noticed before we started doing this that you were your ears perked up when you heard coffee so you're a bit of a coffee man i'm coffee. not a coffee snob but it's no. just coffee to stay awake oh, well, exactly. <laughs> to stay awake oh, okay. four year old and 18 month old we don't get me wrong we've got coffee snobs and yeah. i appreciate a nice cup of coffee but who's a coffee snob um well I can, nathan smith i can tell already yeah is a coffee snob. He was in Method uh, this morning at 10 o'clock. So I think he's he's going to be a coffee snob. Hosey, he loves that. It takes 40 minutes for him to make a coffee on his sage. While listening to Taylor Swift. While like listening it. to Taylor Swift, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he ticks all the boxes. There's nothing wrong with being a coffee snob, though, is there? No, I don't, I, I'm a coffee snob. Yeah. I'm not. Oh, I'm, not. I'm massively. I'm, I'm the sort of guy that literally is like, I'll have a macchiato. Do you know how to make one? I don't say that, obviously, but like, you know. Look What's just actually a good spot for coffee? I know, it's great. Yeah, uh, you've got methods, one. you've got Francina, you've been in the morning. Reach out and sponsor. Yeah, we'll have to do that. Or the programme, I'll very happily have one before the for this pod. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What's the Colombian place in? Francina, do Colombia. That the best coffee in Worcester, I think. Really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah very like happy. But if any of the other coffee shops yeah. got yeah. them as well, yeah. others yeah. are available. <laughs> <laughs> um, bear in mind, you've got three people here around the table with you. If you could choose any three other people to have a dinner party with, who would they be? Oh, it's not us three, is it? It's not us three. No, it's not. Yeah. I'm afraid. Um, Ricky Gervais. Yeah, ish. <laughs> ish. Without the jokes. Yeah. Uh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ricky Gervais. Can they be historical figures? Anyone. Yeah. Henry VIII. Okay. Brutal. Chop your head off, mate, or something. No, no it's, it's just women, wasn't it? Yeah, I suppose so. Um, I don't know. Just have a three. Just those. Three. Just that three. I mean, the size of Henry VIII, you'd probably only be able to fit yeah. him around one side. Yeah, exactly. All right, you two. Three. You go. Need a bit of think about this. Yeah. Quite panicked. It's quite controversial. So I'm <laughs> right on the spot now. I think you're looking at someone like. Um, oh wow! What a question. I know. Um, Think about it. Last Churchill, year. probably. Churchill, You're right up there. Yeah. For me, yeah. Yeah. Person. I'd probably go somewhere like Obama. Would be. We can arrange that. Joe's onto it. It's good. Um, Carly Minogue. Yeah. Big Why? fan. I always enjoyed Carly Minogue's music, and um, probably someone again like JFK or someone like that. Just, yeah. Nice. yeah. Someone who's someone who's similar. Even someone like David Attenborough would be really interesting. Oh, that, actually, yeah. I'd have Attenborough. Yeah. Have you worked with him? That's a great shout. Um, he gave me a nice um, compliment, and, and not words with him, but I sat in a green room with him. And, uh, mm. Really nice guy. That's quite cool. He was there really cool. early, so. <laughs> like, he just likes turning up to things early in, like, later years. It was great. Mm-hmm. Nice guy. And very, actually, sort of giving of time and advice. Yeah. So, so good. Um, what's something about you that might surprise fans? I don't think there's much. No, I'd like to think not. Uh, um, no, nothing. You, I mean, you've already you've used my French card, which I yeah. kind of use, <laughs> like 
sporadically. If I think I can get away without having to speak it, yeah. I say that I used to be able to speak French. But, but go on, tell give, give us one sentence. No, 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 not going to happen. No. <laughs> Quel dommage, eh? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the same as you, ex speaker. I studied French at university, but uh, yeah. people say, Oh, do you still use your languages? They're like, No, no, <laughs> no. It's amazing Either. how quickly you forget it. It just goes, it just goes. I think I had like one day when I was living there that I could dream in French. Apart from that, that was it. Special, yeah. Any languages from you two? It's no. a bad language. Yeah, yeah nothing. No. no good language whatsoever. Right, let's do a rapid fire round then, Joe. Yeah. Okay, as quick as you can. Okay. Favourite cricket shot? Uh, pull shot. Best friend in the cricketing world? Uh, Charlie Morris. One word to describe your bowling style? Steady. <laughs> the last movie you watched? Uh, Coach Carter. Okay, good one. An early bird or night owl? Early bird. Yeah, I can see that. Well, thank you very much. This has been your player spotlight, Green King player spotlight. Appreciated having you on. We talked to you a little bit about your testimonial year at the start. Are the club doing any plans for it as well? Yeah, we've got quite a bit of support lined up. Joe, you might better elaborate. Yeah, I think we're hosting a few events. Uh, a couple of them already kicked off at New Road. Um, we just want to support Joe um, as much as possible, really, for the service he's given to the club over quite a long period of time. He's been an absolute kind of rock of the dressing room along with probably Dolly for 15 years I would have thought in there um, you know he's, the club's rightly honoured him he probably thinks it's probably a few years too late um, and yeah we, we're here to support that um, as much as we can really. I mean in the old days it was a sort of thing you aspired to as a young player is to get in getting your county cap and then getting your benefit year you see it less and less nowadays so it's great credit to those who who get to that position um, you know, and those guys are really, they just form part of your, your sort, of, sort of cultural environment. Um, they, they're, they're what put, put teams together and Joe's, Joe's been a really important part of that dressing room. Thoroughly deserves his benefit you. Mr. Consistency, thank you so much for coming on the, on the programme. Appreciate it. Have you enjoyed it? Yes, I have. God, I'd hope I did better than Richard. Oh, well. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, much better. Yeah. Much we, better. We'd have Joe back. We'd have Joe back. Okay, good. Okay. Although you did set the bar really low for uh, describe yourself in 10 words. So yeah. I'm guess. also panicking about Henry VIII now. I just don't know what anyone would want. We're going to get a bit of slack about it. All right. Thank you all for listening, for watching. Really appreciate it. If you made it this far, you definitely deserve a medal. Thank you to Midland Road Studios uh, for hosting us. And uh, yeah, if you've got any questions ahead of the next program, do uh, get in touch with them on social media. Thank you very much to Joe, Joe, to Ash, and from myself, Castro Alon. Have a brilliant day.